Welcome to the video, Trailmaker. If you clicked on this video, you want to know more about decaling and cockpit design. And that's exactly what this video is about. You totally win. On this plane, the canopy is made out of blocky wedges, but the body relies on curved blocks for its shape. To blend the angles and the curves together, I use the inside edge of a heart decal here to give the canopy more definition and obscure some of its blocky angles. On the rudder, I combine different black, yellow, and red decals to trick the eye into seeing one large airfoil here, rather than a group of blocks that make up a tail fin shape. On the nose, I use eyes to obscure the shape of the camera box. On Bad Maw from my Stranded series, I use a basic yellow square to complete the pattern on the body when seen from above. On the tadpole, I use the same square decal to transition from gray to red to hide the stitch look of the flat connector block. On this plane, I use basic squares and stripes to create these pinstripes all around the edge of the plane. It's a very basic technique that can yield very advanced looking results. On my sea gray camo version of the Hawker Tempest, I created the camo pattern using almost exclusively the number 3 and extreme angles. Your camera angle is everything when placing decals. When you place a decal at an extreme angle, it will stretch to fill the visible space as seen from your camera angle. You can use this to create lots of weird new shapes. Now in most cases, you can get a decal to duplicate mirrored to the original if you do it correctly. In this case, I want the skull and crossbones to angle the same way on either side. All I need is a spacer with a connection point to get the whole piece to mirror its position and decal correctly. If you mess with the angle of the decal, all bets are off. Your chances of mirroring it perfectly are pretty much zero, so keep that in mind. This also applies to groups of blocks. This janky shape won't duplicate correctly until I get a spacer to tell it to mirror the shape, not just duplicate it. On this set of blocks, I create a flashy symbol using just an eye decal. I start by placing the eye on the four blocks, then deleting the top two, and then duplicating the others. Then I play with the colors on each individual block's decal to create this very stern looking symbol. I use an eye decal over the taillight here on the Hawker Tempest to simulate the pistons firing in the massive Napier Sabre 4 that powered the plane. I link the light input to the throttle of the plane and just set some random blinking timers on the lights. It's pretty cool if I do say so myself. Now before I move on to the interior design section of this video, I want to shout out Dan Online. Dan has a video that I learned a lot from when the decal update was still new. I'll link it in the description. Be sure and check it out to get the advanced lesson on decaling and cockpits.
Since the decals you use have no purpose beyond providing immersion and looking cool, it can be a pretty personal design choice kind of situation here. To get started, I just sit in first person and try and identify what blocks are visible and what sort of decal would make sense there. Dials, gauges, background patterns, heads up display. I feel like there's not much to teach here. It's a matter of getting in first person and decorating your space and experimenting with decals and seeing what kind of look you can get. For me, it all started here, before decals were a thing. I used flat connector blocks on the nose of my planes as makeshift iron sights from the top of seat camera. With decals, it evolved to this. With a lot of free time and some green screen, it evolved to this. There are basically two kinds of cockpits in Trailmakers. The type where you piston glitch glass blocks over an open seat as a canopy, and the full interior type where you have a seat surrounded by glass blocks with some open air and room for lights and gauges and all kinds of bells and whistles. I'll show you one of each of mine. This plane I built specifically to tinker with cockpit ideas. You can see how I combine decals and different shaped glass blocks to create a unique shape. piston on the nose completes the final shape. Oh, and that piston needs a decal. Perfect teaching moment. I'm going to paint this piston with a decal to blend it into the canopy better. Get that orange, and there we go. So this is an example of a piston type cockpit. And the next type doesn't exactly demand much ex explanation. Build a cool shape around a seat that looks like a cockpit you want, and you're done. <laughs> okay, mostly. You do have a lot more room here for fancy bells and whistles with the larger space. On the bearded tadpole, I have a series of indicator lights giving me useful information while I'm in first person. The blinker tells me my gimbal jets are active and that I'm light as a feather. The lights on either side indicate that my automatic landing gear is down. And the forward facing light tells me that I'm a meter above the ground and I can cut the engines. Well guys, that's all I can think of right now for this video. I'm sure I'll think of like 10 things I should have mentioned as soon as I upload it. Anyway, I hope it was informative and or entertaining, and if you're still here, you might as well mash that potato button. You like potatoes, don't you? Potatoes, you know, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Mm -hmm. Potatoes? You like potatoes.